I'm Rich Brown, Executive Editor for Smart Home and Appliances. CNET bought a house in Louisville, Kentucky, and turned it into a living lab to test the latest, greatest smart home gadgets. CNET also leases an apartment in downtown Louisville, one floor above a city-sponsored hacker space called Louis Lab. With me to talk more about Louisville's effort and smart technology is the mayor of Louisville, Mr. Greg Fisher. Mayor Fisher, thank you for joining us here today. Good to be with you, Rich. So I wonder if you can talk a little bit about the evolution of the uh, city of Louisville's sort of interest in smart city, which is really kind of what this is, right, and, and how the Louis Lab came to be. Yeah, you know, a lot, a lot of buzz, obviously, about smart cities and smart homes. We're interested in what's the intersection of those so we can make our citizens' life easier. So when people talk about smart homes frequently, they think about the consumer aspect of that. And we don't really look at our people as consumers, we look at them as citizens. So how can we meld that world of smart city, which is open data that's out there for everybody, all information from weather, policing, traffic, how do you integrate that into a smart apartment or a smart home to make our citizens' life easier? And also we have what we call citizen science. How do we involve our citizens so we can crowdsource data from them to make a smarter city as well? Mm -hmm. So the city has some, I believe the city has some, some air quality sensors, for example, distributed around that we, we know pull in data, and we've had that in the apartment actually tied into a, uh, a light bulb there. So if the, if the air quality goes bad, the color will change light, or pardon me, the light will change color so that you kind of get an indicator. Maybe you can do something about it if you have an air quality issue. Are there other, are there other, are there other elements of smart city and sort of data gathering that you are particularly interested in, in, in Louisville or just in general? Well, take an example, let's say uh, you're a commuter, you want to know how things are going to be on your drive in to work, and we have a partnership with Waze, so we know what our traffic data is like at all, uh, all times as well. Obviously our weather conditions, we know what that is, we have city feed for that. So we've uh, worked with uh, Alexa and others to create an agnostics uh, app so that you can say, uh, what if this is going on? And so let's say I'm going to work and I'll say traffic's fine, weather's fine. So we want to make sure there's no weather issues. So it just helps me plan how I can get to work easier. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if you can talk to some of the, the challenges particular to smart city data gathering, getting that information out to residents, how you work across socio socioeconomic lines. Well, there's, there's been such an interest in smart cities, in Louisville especially open data, so we've, we've done a lot of experience with what we call, again, citizen scientists, so the air quality is an example of that. We're in the Ohio River Valley, air quality is not so as good as in other areas, so if you have asthma, it's a problem. We've got a right. thousand citizens that have volunteered where their asthma inhalers have a GPS on it, so we know where episodes are taking place, so we can have identified the hot spots in our city mm -hmm. so we can mitigate those hot spots with either changing traffic patterns or vegetative medicine and then we can do one-to-one -one health interventions as well so the more platforms we create like that where people can get involved we find very good not just for quality of life enhancement but also then in building trust between citizens and their government so the more we can do to reach out to people to ask them to be part of a smart city environment we find people are very willing uh, to participate in that. Our, our hacker community, our maker community, love for us to throw challenges to them as well, and they've really come through with a lot of solutions. So that, that's, that's interesting, the, the whole idea of crossing over from government to in, you know, independent citizens, maybe private businesses, helping to see the smart city idea come to fruition. Uh, have, how has the interaction been with, say, say, the business community and getting things off the ground here? Well, it's been great with, I, I call it the entrepreneurial community. Mm -hmm. So let me give you an example of that. Uh, we want to increase fire safety like every city as well uh, does. And then we had a vacant abandoned property situation. Those were two different silos, but when those groups got together and looked at their data together, they said, we've got an issue where if there's a fire at a vacant property, uh, that can be a danger, obviously, to adjoining properties. Mm -hmm. But it takes longer for a fire alert to be called into the fire department if the property is vacant. Our maker community looked at that and said, well, what if we had a low cost fire alarm that could notify the fire department? And they said, that can't be done. It cost $1,000 for the, a fire detector. You have to have power to the house. These homes are abandoned. Huh. Uh, our maker community said, well, what if we make something that's solar powered, that is actually listening to a $15 smoke detector device build a modem into that, and then off it goes to the fire department and also shoots a signal up to the web as well. For less, so for less than 
these makers, entrepreneurs, created a company now that has the first of its kind for a low dollar smoke detector for vacant properties that makes our city safer. Is there a political element or a, a partisanship element that has come to play in any of the smart city, in, 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 any, in any of this really? Well, I hadn't heard that before, but we are in uncharted political waters we these are, days, so we? it's just a matter of time, I'm sure. I, I would imagine so. Um, so I wonder if you can speak to anything uh, specific to the Louis Lab, which is sort of a brand new office, right? So what, what, are your, what are you hoping will come out of that in particular? Well, I think what's interesting about that is when you show the power of public-private partnerships. So we created a, a innovation center with General Electric Appliances, the University of Louisville, called First Build mm -hmm. in Community. So it's a co-located uh, innovation space micro factory. When we learned that you guys had a smart home in Louisville and then we started working together around that, we said, well, what about the folks that are renting? So we were developing something called Louis Lab where we were co-locating our performance improvement and innovation uh, professionals. We're known in the country as the most innovative cities that comes to civic innovation. Mm -hmm. And you guys said, well, hey, what about a smart apartment? Why don't we co-locate co that? So you're one story above our Louis Lab space, so we yep. work together in that regard. So uh, that's where we really see the partnership of, of uh, opportunities. CNET in this case, GE Appliances and the others. Mm -hmm. We're working with our healthcare communities for different uh, opportunities as well. And all the time we're trying to bring citizens into this loop. Because if we can enhance the quality of life of a citizen, what that does is grow the trust between citizen and government. And that's something these days that's being sorely tested. Are you looking into other cities and what they are doing? Are there, any, are there any cities you feel are doing smart city particularly well right now? Well, a lot of people are talking about uh, smart city applications. So, you know, it could be policing, it could be traffic, it could be a lot of stuff that we're talking about. Our sweet spot as a city is that we're big enough to be internationally relevant, but we're small enough to get things done. Our mm -hmm. metro area is about 1.4 million people. So what we're interested in is enhancing that citizen experience and bridging that world between the home and the city and have people look at really their home in an expanded sense, the city is your home. So how do you bring all this data together and let it talk to you either in the home, in your car, on your device, so that you're totally informed about what your options are to enhance your quality of life. That could be entertainment, it could be safety, it could be traffic, it could be a variety of things. All right, Mayor Fisher, thank you for being with us today.